Last week, we discussed how so much of our attention is automatically directed by subconscious beliefs and how by operating from an elevated awareness position, we can consciously direct our attention to whatever ends we may desire. We also discussed how you transcend the beliefs in the subconscious mind as your true essence is formless. So in other words, you pick and choose what to believe and not believe easily. And from there, everything happens automatically as our subconscious mind creates our world. This regenerative way of being then re-becomes habitual. I say re-becomes as I believe that this is a natural way of being, a way of how we are authentically designed to be. And all we're doing here with this information is reclaiming that you always had the power to consciously direct your mind, a harmonious relationship between conscious and subconscious. Acknowledge that you always had this power. It was never taken away. Because if we believe that there is something outside trying to take away your power, life is experienced that way, then the power is then unknowingly assigned to create those kinds of experiences. Because that's what the power does. It is directed by your intention. You simply direct it by suggesting how it operates, and it does that way. So the unseen power never left us. All we're doing here with this information is learning how to direct it through conscious intention. I like that. Conscious intention. And so I relate this to the word concentration. Concentration comes from the word concentrate from the French concentre, from con plus center, meaning to put at the center. So let us return to the center so we can concentrate on our initiatives without force, as I like to call it, lighthearted concentration, power without force. So this center is our sense of awareness, otherwise referred to as the divine center, or the center of being, or the center of consciousness, as articulated by James Allen in his book, The Heavenly Life. Let's build our conversation on this foundation. He says, The secret of life, of abundant life with its strength, its felicity, and its unbroken peace, is to find the divine center within oneself, and to live in and from that, instead of in that outer circumference of disturbances. So I used to think that developing concentration was an act of mental strain. And while one could force themselves to remain focused on one initiative till complete, whether it be a project or a task, there is another way that I found that is more aligned with a natural way of being, authenticity, operating from the divine center. As discussed in Sunday's video, which I'll link to in the description, we have a formless self, the I. And this is not referring to what a person believes themselves to be. That's referring to beliefs in mind. Beliefs that make up the outer aspects of life. Here I'm referring to the I that transcends all beliefs. The divine center the center of your consciousness, which is formless. We also have imagination, which is what we suggest to ourselves, to this I. How we suggest ourselves to be, these imaginal acts of creation form subconscious beliefs, which we operate automatically from. This is how your heart beats. Your world appears to move all automatic expressions of your subconscious mind. And we can become aware of what we were once believing. And if they're undesirable, release them. By bringing awareness to what beliefs we have in the subconscious mind, 
and reimagine new beliefs to give form to that I. And it reflects as the outer aspects of life. Like a vision, for example, which is a belief made up of many related beliefs. For example, in your imagination, you believe yourself into achieving something in life. And as you do, you also see yourself interacting with the world or believing it to be a certain way. And thus, like your vision, the world we live in is made up of beliefs. And you could believe whatever you want. So why not believe what you love? Beliefs can be inspired from others, like entrepreneurship, for example. If I say, it can actually be fun, or relating with others can be actually quite fun, which one might not believe currently. However, once they suggest it to themselves and accept that suggestion, they go on to believing it and thus experiencing it, and it also becomes part of their self-image, which again is made up of beliefs. Also, with a vision, we can operate by faith, which transcends beliefs. As a matter of fact, faith creates beliefs. For example, if we don't believe how our vision is to happen, like a child, as they remain committed to the vision beyond belief, they see it into existence through their faith. Maybe they have some supporting beliefs, maybe not. Nevertheless, the vision is realized and they have been self-actualized to a higher degree. All of this happens during moments of lighthearted concentration on whatever initiative we commit to as we operate from our vision. So again, this is lighthearted concentration from our vision, which allows it to all happen automatically, all three, automatic lighthearted concentration, the inner transformation, and realizing the vision as physical experience into physical existence. And this is beyond trying to control, but rather allowing it to be a natural way of being. We let it be. We let it happen. I like how it was articulated in psycho by Maxwell Maltz. Let's recall it here. Number one. Your built-in success mechanism is oriented to a goal or a vision, whatever you personally are inspired by. Number two, the vision is conceived of as already in existence now, either in actual or potential form, because that's how it actually is. All things exist. Creation is complete, and we are revealing it rather than creating it. Your mind is a divine conduit. The creating it is part of the human experience. And number three, you trust it to happen without unnecessary conscious effort. You let it rather than make it happen. So we allow our attention to remain on what is in harmony with our vision by remaining oriented from our vision while allowing our mind to be open for inspiration in relationship with our vision. And this is actually a childlike way of being. For example, a child engaged with the project that they are genuinely interested in is entertained by any challenges in relation to it, cultivates skill in the process, and can be there the whole day. They also experience lighthearted concentration as a result while reaping all the benefits mentioned. Through the repetition of being this way, which is an authentic way of being, they grow up as a person who others might say has an amazing ability to concentrate. Also, it's important to acknowledge that no matter where we are on the journey, we can reconnect back to this natural way of being, lighthearted concentration from our vision. We all have this ability. Age has nothing to do with it. This is a state of being. And children, it is in these moments of lighthearted concentration where they come up with ideas related to the current project or ideas for new projects related closely 
or to new projects that may appear distantly related. Everything is interconnected. So there is a some way, somehow relationship. This is true concentration. We see no force, stress, or frustration. Rather, a natural way of being, and it harmonizes with all other areas of life. And we experience pattern recognition and intuitive connectiveness. Now, having recognized that this was what was going on, I committed to returning to this way of being over the years to great success, and I've taught this to many. This is a combination of the following: faith. Number two, releasing identification to inharmonious beliefs in mind. And number three, which happens automatically from lighthearted concentration, forming powerful core beliefs as healthy self-image and relationship with the world. Again, all by being in lighthearted concentration, with conscious intention, on a chosen initiative. So, as mentioned, children. Concentrate naturally, and they may learn many beliefs from wherever, and some may be helpful, and others not so much. And then they allow their attention to be governed by this programming. And if it's not helpful, they could end up finding it difficult to concentrate on their business, career, sports, etc. And there's nothing wrong with them. Their attention is only being automatically oriented by certain. Subconscious beliefs in their mind. So let's talk about how to recalibrate to light-hearted concentration, a natural way of being. Now there are activities that we genuinely love to do, which we could find it easier to concentrate on, vitalized by desire. Usually, I've seen this to be the case with myself and others. And there are activities that one would consider boring or undesirable, which They may find it challenging to concentrate on. Both of these can be areas where light-hearted concentration can be practiced. In entrepreneurship, for example, when some start out, they begin to do many things, playing many roles in their business, the things that they love to do and the things that they don't like to do. To create a successful venture, it is important that we note the things that we don't love to do. Which also happens to be things where we can find others who love to do them and delegate. Now, with technology playing a larger role each day exponentially, let's say others don't want to do it, we can automate those items. So, if we find ourselves performing the initiatives which can be delegated or automated until that point where we transition them, we can practice light-hearted concentration. In the video that I released last week, which I'll link to in the description, I discuss how connecting back to your why, your desire, can actually stimulate your imagination for inspiration. That is what desire does: stimulates imagination, and imagination creates reality. This is also true for stimulating light-hearted concentration. As this is a mental state, and you can imagine yourself into any state. This seems very easy to do when we do what we love, which is why I encourage it. And what about that which we don't enjoy doing yet? It has to be done till, at a certain point, where we can delegate or eliminate. Well, I like to do it from a place of flow, which is light-hearted concentration. As a practice, so the way I do it is, I stimulate the desire by asking myself, "Why is this important?" And in this case, it would be to practice light-hearted concentration, so that I can be, experientially, the kind of person who finds it, any place, anywhere, unconditionally. I can practice this for a period of time with these initiatives, knowing that I'll end up delegating, automating, or even eliminating doing them later on. And for me now, this why is the opportunity to practice directing my mind lightheartedly. I see it as a practice. So if I can lightheartedly concentrate on this activity, 
then I am a master of my own mind, intrinsically motivated. And to me, that is priceless as our attention really is priceless. So that's it. A simple, purposeful intention of engaging with it from a place of lighthearted concentration prior to engaging lets it happen that way. You suggest it to yourself, accept that suggestion, and then you operate from that premise. So if it is what you love to do, set the intention prior. Enter into that state by imagining that you already are that person now. Think feelingly into it or feel yourself into that state. Let anything you do be regenerative. If it's not something you normally enjoy doing, recall your why, which can be the ability to have a lighthearted concentration in any initiative. That's mine. Think feelingly into it. Feel yourself into that state and carry out the initiative from that premise. Again, let anything you do be regenerative. Also, if you like some exercises which are helpful with restoring your natural lighthearted concentration ability as they help us practice entering into an ideal state instantly, then in the Master Key System by Charles Hanel, which I like to revisit often, he shares three excellent ones. Was once a correspondence series on the same thing, how to return to formless awareness and operating from an ideal state. And so we can apply these exercises here to return us back to the divine center and operate from our vision. This ideal state of being, mentally, emotionally, and physically. The first is be still. He says, select a room where you can be alone and undisturbed and sit comfortably, but do not lounge. Let your thoughts roam where they will, but be perfectly still for from 15 minutes to half an hour. Continue this for three or four days for a week until you secure full control of your physical being. He then expands upon it and says, I gave you an exercise for the purpose of securing control of the physical body. If you have accomplished this, you are ready to advance. This time, you will begin to control your thought. Always take the same room, the same chair, and the same position, if possible. In some cases, it is not convenient to take the same room. In this case, simply make the best use of such conditions as may be available. Now be perfectly still as before, but inhibit all thought, which means to allow the thoughts to be without identifying with them. He says, this will enable you to entertain only the kind of thoughts you desire. Continue this exercise until you gain complete mastery. Number two, he has a tension release or an emotional release exercise. The first one is for body and thoughts in mind. And this one is for emotions. I've been using this for many years since 2007 when I discovered this book and it works perfectly. Simple and powerful, it allows us to return back to the divine center and operate ideally from it. He says, now after taking your usual position, remove all tension by completely relaxing. Then mentally let go of all adverse conditions, such as hatred, anger, worry, jealousy, envy, sorrow, trouble, or disappointment of any kind. And so he says one might say they can't let go of these things. But you can. You can do so by mentally determining to do so. Suggestion. Intention. As he says, by voluntary intention. Then we have number three. 
which is, again, lighthearted concentration on one word, which is related to the magic word video I created recently, creating your magic word to recall any desired state. I'll link in the description to that video. He says, for your next exercise, concentrate on harmony. And when I say concentrate, I mean all that the word implies. Concentrate so deeply, so earnestly, that you will be conscious of nothing but harmony. And again, no strain or force when applying this concentration exercise, lighthearted contemplation and allowing the ideas to flow into your imagination, what is related to harmony. So these three exercises have been very helpful for me to recalibrate back to lighthearted concentration, and I trust you'll find them to be helpful for you as well. As mentioned, you see that all three of them can also be done with any initiative you are working on. This happens actually automatically from a position of lighthearted concentration in relation to any initiative you are working on. This is essentially operating from a state of flow in relation to your vision. And if you'd like to learn more about flow state, I'll link in the description to a number of flow state videos that I released this year. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto suggestion to further encourage. You could say, I allow my attention to remain on my vision by orienting from my vision through simple acknowledgement that my true essence is formless. And from this formless being, I allow myself to be how I naturally desire to be, vitalized by desire allowing my imagination to be stimulated, returning me back into and operating from my ideal state of body, emotion, mind, and spirit. Creativity flows through me from the infinite world of of imagination in a blissful, flow-based way expressed as innovation, invention, and artistic expression in all areas of my life. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.